My name is Elizabeth Reynolds. I'm the program director for Starburst. I'm focused largely on building this new program with UCLA scale. Um, my background is business operations and startups. I've been in the, the startup world for about the last seven, eight years now um, as COO of a number of companies, including biotech, software, interactive media, um, launched my own company, done everything uh, through an IPO. Um, and I'm really excited to be here and working with Starburst to help build these early stage programs and support all of you and your missions to build cool tech and help change the world. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's, a, that's my quick intro. Asher, you want to say do the same? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Elizabeth. Uh, so just quick introduction on myself. I lead a lot of our technology scouting here at Starburst. So both on the accelerator side and uh, what will be venture side and, and as well as the, the kind of corporate and government targeted scouting that we do for our clients. So um, a lot of my day is listening to pitches, meeting founders and kind of learning more about their business models and, and how we can help support. Uh, so super excited to be helping Elizabeth uh, with the selection for what will be the first cohort here of scale and, and hopefully seeing some new businesses here in LA. So happy to answer any questions anyone has on, on really anything related to the program as well as like what what kind of startups we're looking for and, and all of that. Um, but uh, yeah, I, Elizabeth, I will let you take it away from here. Cool. Actually, you want to give a quick Starburst intro in general for folks as well, and then I'll, I'll dig into scale in more detail. Yeah, absolutely. So for those of you on the on the line here that don't know us, um, Starburst has been around for a number of years now, originally started in 2013, 14 uh, in Europe and Paris, more specifically uh, as an aerospace and defense consulting firm. So one of the co-founders of Starburst, Francois, um, who, who some of you may have met or, or seen online, was working for a long time at Oliver Weinman and spun out, uh, you know, some of his client base there that was, you know, some names that, that you might recognize, Airbus, Telus, Safran, and was really helping them understand a forever changing aerospace and defense market landscape with, you know, SpaceX driving down the cost of launch and data being demanded at, at rates we've never seen before. Um, there was quite quite an appetite on the side of the corporates to, to really understand what startups should they be looking at next and, and they wanted a piece of the action and so that was the nexus behind starburst it's eventually blossomed into what now is uh, a company that operates a number of accelerator programs around the world at various stages of maturity so scale is one of our earlier stage programs for you know new businesses coming online and uh, or, or businesses that haven't yet operated really in aerospace and defense that are looking to transition uh, into operating into the sector. Um, I work closely with our late stage accelerator team as well. So that's a 12 month program designed to help startups that have either gone through one of our earlier stage programs or, or uh, you know, is just at that seed stage of maturity looking to get to the series A milestone. Uh, so we help a lot on that side. and. Uh, you know, the, the last piece of Starburst is we're developing a, a, a fund of our own that will be a further investor in a lot of the companies we work with, uh, whether it be through scale uh, or, or our later stage program. So I think that's the quick and dirty on Starburst. Happy to answer any questions if anyone wants to chat further on Starburst as well. Uh, my email is asher at starburst.arrow too. If, if you don't have questions that come to mind, but later today, you know, uh, they, they come up, feel free to email me anytime and, and happy to chat. Thanks, Asher. Yep. Um, so yeah, Scale is Starburst's newest early stage accelerator. Um, we won a three-year grant from the Department of Commerce to build this program in partnership with UCLA. Uh, the aims of the program are centered around developing new technology and advancing technology readiness and bringing products into market um, and expanding economic development and company growth. So our goal is to help the companies come into this program, really fine tune, uh, fine -tune their fundraising strategy, pitches, help do customer discovery and really define the brand and set up the business to scale and become a successful commercial enterprise. Um, so it's a 13 week program. The first cohort begins on May 10th and runs through August 6th. Um, we'll cover a range of topics uh, and have some really fantastic people coming in to work with you throughout the program, 
including a large number of ECs who will be teaching some of the courses and available during pitch practices um, and experts from all over the field, from deep in the industry and in aerospace to executives from big tech companies like Lyft and Airbnb um, and people who have really helped some of the best teams build their businesses. Um, so we're really excited to to dive into this and tell you guys some more about uh, about what we're doing. So um, if anybody has has questions, um, you'll see a Q&A feature at the top of your screen. You can enter your questions there or in the chat um, and we will will answer questions as they come up there. Um, so I see one here that's a good one to start with here. Um, Yes, the program, this first program is completely virtual. Um, we are looking for companies who are in the SoCal region or who are looking to build their businesses in or expand business in the SoCal region, um, but everything will be digital uh, for probably the first and second cohort. Um, once, we are, once, we are, once we are sure that we can hold everything safely, uh, we will be doing so uh, through in, in real life, most like, uh, not sure of the location yet, but uh, somewhere uh, in the LA region, so. So I see we've got a, a couple more coming through, so we're, we're starting to get there. Uh, can you talk a little bit, Elizabeth, about is the 13 week program full-time, eight hours a day? Uh, is it designed for people that are working on startups full-time or can a working professional also, you know, have? Uh, a, a part-time startup that they're trying to launch and, and still participate? So, uh, yeah, first of all, it's definitely not a full-time program. Um, <laughs> we want you to be building these companies and you can't, you can't do a eight hour a day program and also run a business. Uh, make it, it's, it's challenging enough to build a startup. So um, the, the structure is, I, I would say roughly five hours um, a week of lecture or workshop um, with additional hours in office hours and networking events uh, that are kind of interspersed throughout. Um, most weeks, uh, the majority of the, the lectures and workshops will be on Monday and Wednesday. Um, and then we will do some special events, largely on Fridays, uh, including a biweekly Friday pitch practice. Um, and the mentorship is structured as office hours in this format, um, because often the same people who are teaching the lectures or workshops are the people who are providing the office hours. And so you'll have an opportunity to hear all of the material in, in kind of a broad context, but then work individually with these experts in all of these different fields to really integrate and personalize everything you're hearing. So the, the program really is custom tailored to you and where you are with your company. Um, Amazing. Amazing. And, uh, yeah. Um, and as far as, uh, you know, whether or not you, you as founders can, can do this part time, I, I will say there, there's a mixed answer to that. Yes, absolutely. Um, I have certainly started a company while working another full time job, um, but it's, it's hard. And so uh, that's certainly not something that would uh, disqualify you, but it, there needs to be an intention to take the company full time as it gets traction or it, it, the company probably will not will not succeed. Um, it is it is a really all encompassing experience to build a business. So, touche touche. It's a good point. <laughs> um, so next one up here that we can just tack off the list regarding location. If the company is headquartered elsewhere in California, can they still apply based on the fact that they will be relocating in Southern California? Absolutely. <laughs> Simple enough. Uh, yeah. so next one here before we get to a little bit of a meteor question is, you mentioned industry panelists. Will these be focused on the aerospace industry and slash or will there be customer discovery with some of Starburst industry partners, for example, Airbus? Uh, both. So the people who the people who are um, participating in the program and sharing sharing their expertise and experience directly with with the cohort um, come from across the the aerospace industry um, 
and we'll have we'll have people both who have helped build and lead commercial enterprises and people on the government side who will talk to you about how to navigate working within the the government system and working on proposals um, and we'll also do a lot of work on strategy and customer discovery um, and we it is certainly our goal uh, to, to help you find the business partners that you need to scale and succeed in a and d as well obviously a and d is a is a complicated industry um, and navigating that can be difficult and that is absolutely what starburst does well Good answer. Feel free to expand on that if you want, Asher. But <laughs> yeah, no, no, I think that's spot yeah, yeah. on. You know, you're you're going to get a good mix of kind of what Elizabeth touched on earlier, which is the Airbnb and Lyfts of the world. So the fast moving, more consumer tech, um, LA based, you know, or, or California based in general uh, experts that can help you scale the business quickly and understand how to iterate fast. But then you're also going to get a lot of mentorship and customer discovery uh on like actual product market fit within aerospace uh and defense so someone like an airbus and nasa jpl um northrop raytheon and, and really get an idea of where does your technology fit best within their existing gaps and future mission areas um so you, you get a mix of both and i think you said that quite well elizabeth um so we're, we're getting a couple of questions on the next topic here that i think is worth spending a bit of time on which is Really, what's the ideal startup to, to apply for scale? Um, and, and I think there's a number of different ways we can answer this. So one that's suggested here in the chat is how mature in terms of traction or sales does the business need to be? Um, you know, I think a, another piece that's worth touching on, too, is like how old is the company itself? How old is the technology? How developed it is? So uh, maybe, Elizabeth, if you want to give your uh, thoughts on that and then I can jump in as well. Yeah, uh, I'll, yeah, I'll give kind of the, the broad answer is that we are looking for pre-seed and seed stage companies. Um, and that, uh, you know, obviously uh, that can that can be defined a little differently if you already have some government grants and have some funding in that has allowed you to get to a prototype or MVP stage. Uh, I, would, I would say that that falls in that same category. Um, but we are we're definitely looking for folks who are who are past the ideation stage. Um, who have a couple, you know, who have a team who are who are working on this um, either full time or plan to be full time as the company grows, um, and who who have some who have a, at least some initial interest, um, even if they're not they're not paying customers, uh, have spent some time out in the market and and confirmed that there is interest in what is being built, um, and uh, yeah, obviously I, you know it. Again, a huge part of this, as I as I mentioned, is the the difficulty that comes with building a business. So, looking look, we are definitely looking for people who are excited by what they're doing and really passionate about this opportunity to to make the world a better place and have that big vision uh, associated with this. So, yep, that's a good point. Um, and I think just to add on what you said, there's there's really two types of companies we would like to work with. So, on the one hand, it's your very traditional pre-seed seed startup that is really just getting going. On the flip side of that, we'd be interested in hearing from companies that maybe are a bit later stage, not necessarily on the investment side, but technology wise. So maybe they've bootstrapped the business for a number of years um, in a different industry. So, so maybe they're operating in biotech, maybe they're operating in more of the like logistics supply chain area, and they really wanna dive deeper into what is applying their technology in defense or aerospace look like. Um, those are businesses we're interested to support as well. So I think it's two flip sides of that coin. And we're interested in, in really hearing from anyone and, and anything that they think can, can help the sector and um, would like some, some external support on our end. Um, so that probably brings us to the next quick question here. Yes, the, the video will be recorded after the event. Uh, so we'll have that on the website for you. So no worries if you can't attend for this whole session here. Um, so diving next, the FAQ on the website says there's no equity taken upon joining the program. Elizabeth, can you touch a bit on what does scale ask for in return? Is the program free? Program is completely free. Um, as I said, this is this is funded by a federal grant. Um, so this is this is something that we are that we really are doing simply to support innovation in the community. Um, it uh, 
we're at a really, a really pivotal time, I think, in the aerospace industry, and we are seeing a lot of advances that are lowering barriers to entry and a lot of interest from private capital. Um, and our goal really is, is just to provide support and really uh, provide the network necessary for people to grow their businesses. And this will benefit uh, the industry across verticals for a long time to come. So we're just, we're just helping build the base necessary to, to drive those advancements. Definitely. Um, so next one here, that's also on a more logistical note, how do you apply to the program? Um, so I, I think it's worth touching on, you know, is there a single application? What are the deadlines? Where can they submit? How can they submit? Uh, what do we want them to submit? So kind of all those packed in one, um, it's worth spending some time on. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'm sorry, I should have, uh, should have thought to put our, our website on a slide, but the website is scale arrow, all one word, dot L-A. Um, you can also go to the Starburst website and navigate from there to it, but um, scalearrow.la will have all like a nice overview, including a timeline for the program. And you'll see links uh, throughout that website, both in the banner at the top and near the bottom of the page to apply. Uh, there's just a single application form. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Our, our, our goal is that this that the application should provide some base information for us, but we don't want it to be an impediment to application. Again, we know everybody has a lot going on. Um, we'd love you to answer those questions that are there. Um, and there is a, there's a spot to upload a deck as well. It's not required, but obviously if you have a deck, that's a, that's a really great thing to provide as, as an overview. Um, and Asher has dropped uh, the website in the chat as well for everyone, if you want to link to it there. Um, yep. And applications are open now. Uh, the last day to apply is April 2nd. And then we will announce the selected companies on April 30th. Um, we're going to select eight companies for this first cohort. All good points. Uh, appreciate that. I think also too, if anyone has any questions on the application process, is worried about is is one of your answers maybe not what we're looking for. You're not sure what the questions that are online mean. Not that any of them are too difficult in particular, but um, again, I'll, I'll put my email in the chat right now. Uh, you can feel free to email me, and, and happy to elaborate further on, on anything. Um, and even get on a call too, if, if necessary. So um, when, and so that brings us to our next question. When is the next cohort, Elizabeth? Um, we will do a cohort this fall winter as well. Um, you know, mid-September through mid-December. And so, then the, there will be two or three a year. Um, we're still finalizing the schedule for, for 2022. Cool. Um, I guess there, there, I don't see any more questions here in the chat. So in that case, uh, can you touch a bit on why, or rather, what, what was the nexus for this program? Kind of what, how did it come to be and why is it free and kind of all the different local ecosystem supporters that have come together to, to help make it happen? I, you touched on it in the, in the webinar that's on the website, but I think it'd be good as, as a follow-on recording here on the website that, that someone should listen into. Yeah, um, I mean, LA has been the, the aerospace capital of the world for a hundred years. <laughs> um, if you're like, as far as, as resources that are available within the aerospace industry, there, there is nowhere else that has the density of industry primes, academia, academia and engineering talent coming out of those schools. Um, as well as you know, some more mature startups, um, if we you know talking about like SpaceX and Relativity, um, as and Capital. Um, LA is at this point uh, the the second funding. Uh, they do the second second highest dollar amount of deals in the world uh, in the world in the nation, uh, following only San Francisco. We actually beat out New York this last year. Um, and we've been seeing more and more investments in aerospace and more large investments as well, supporting some of the later stage growth. Um, 
And so this, this program scale is, is really bringing together all of these nodes um, and really cre creating again, this, this innovation hub that really uh, creates the community that, that startups need uh, and provides all of those resources and pulls from the, the technology development and the talent coming out of the out of the universities and the business and partnership opportunities attached to industry, the funding from VCs and a lot of government support. Um, again, LA has a SoCal has a long, long history in aerospace. If you want, you know, if you're trying to build something that that needs airspace, uh, there again, you've got the Mojave here and a lot of a lot of physical space to build things. Uh, we also have a great, great support system for people who are working in software engineering and a, a ton of resources within the tech community here. Um, and that's that is part of my my personal goal with this program is is to also really bring this this aerospace community into the Silicon Beach community and really continue to develop the, the deep tech coming out of LA. Um, LA has come a, come a really long way in the last 10 years is with the number of companies starting and growing here. And there, I mean, there are very obvious reasons for it um, in, in all industries, but particularly here for those reasons that I covered. And, you know, we all know there's some, there's some really great weather and beach here as well, which, which helps. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, amazing. That, that's a great answer there. And, and it brings really to the next question that was just asked, which is um, it's focused on demo days. So elaborating more on what demo days is going to look like. And it talks about how, uh, is it planned to be a Y Combinator style where you're generating a ton of investor leads, or is it more a demo for aerospace and defense industry partners? Um, and so it'd be good to get more color on that for people listening in. Both, um, you know, uh, with these or with uh, with a focus on earlier stage companies, um, obviously funding is funding is paramount. Um, if you have a if you have a prototype, it's often that that seed round that will get you to an MVP, which you will need to really lock in those corporate partnerships. Um, so our, our focus is, is heavily on funding. Um, and that's why I said there will be a lot of a lot of VC involvement. Um, you'll get a lot of feedback throughout the program from VCs on, on the pitch and on, you know, on the product and the story that you're telling. Um, but we'll also include Starburst corporate partners. Um, and the demo day at the end will include will include a wide range of folks who are who are potential partners and investors going forward. Yeah, and I think I would add on that, that we want to take the YC style demo day one step further because of how industry specific, uh, you know, some of these technologies are. And so we want to ensure that, sure, we can generate, you know, seed lead round investor intros or pre-seed, but at the same time, we want to build and work with you to build a pipeline of customers that are interested in really helping you get to the next phase from there, which is, you know, full scale deployment even a series A finance if you need to do that. Uh, and so we think that, that both of those areas are, are really critical. Uh, and so designing a program, but, but also a demo day for that is, is big. Um, so next question here, is there any funding provided directly from scale? And then the second part of that question is if funds are needed to develop a proof of concept or MVP, would scale be able to connect you to a VC if accepted into the program? Yeah, um, there, uh, there are no, there are no funds provided directly by the program. Um, this, this is a curriculum and service-based program where we will help you succeed through through our through knowledge and network more than anything. Um, and yes, we will absolutely be connecting people with investors. We can't guarantee investment, um, but obviously. Um, it greatly increases your chance of getting investment in going through this program. Um, Starburst is a, a global leader in the aerospace industry, and there is no one else who has as comprehensive view of what's happening in in the startup side of, of aerospace or perhaps the corporate side. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you know, any anybody going through this program who has the resources provided by by both Starburst and UCLA um, and the the pre vetting that that goes with that um, 
will I, I think have a great chance of success. Agreed. Uh, so next one similar is, will it include grant opportunity help? Yeah, we'll we'll touch briefly on uh, the different programs that are that are available um, to for non dilutive capital uh, throughout the program, um, and that is an area where we want to provide some resource. Um, so we will aim to have some folks both from UCLA and from without available to help you during your grant process. Yeah, certainly. Um, yeah. Certainly, I think both on the kind of SBIR side and, and, and others, um, definitely this is an area we, we wanna provide some, some support. All right, so next question coming up in the chat here is any other big takeaways for startups? Uh, and, and feel free for whoever put this in the chat to, to expand on this. But I think Elizabeth, the way I interpret this question is what should startups that are potentially applying to the program really take away from this conversation, but also take away from their participation in the program should they be accepted? So two part question there. Um, I, I'm gonna start with the latter piece of that, which is, uh, the goal of this program is is really to refine a lot of a lot of your skills and to get really direct experience working with a lot of experts and really refining the things you're already doing. Um, certainly, for companies who have been around for a while, um, you have a, a good idea of you know what how you define your brand and how you're going to position yourself in the market and you may have some early customers and we're again like the the customization of the program is is really one of its strengths we really want to make sure that that everything that you're you're doing we can refine and help like and, and help tailor to the specific audiences again aer aerospace is a, a complicated a complicated space because you're you're effectively taking one company but creating two completely different presentations of it depending on who you're speaking to if you're talking to you know commercialization partners in the VC world you're going to present a, a very different company than if you're talking to some of these incumbent primes um, and we really want to help you refine that story um, and grow as a company. Um, and again, set yourself up to, to scale. Um, I've worked with a lot of companies um, and I've come into uh, a lot of companies who are fairly far along, who've been around for a number of years and are you know at 50 employees and, and don't have any of the structure in place to scale. And it's really tricky. So these are, these are things, um, that you may not be thinking about now. Um, there, there's a, a reactivity that comes with running a startup and we wanna really help you get the, the kind of the bones in place to build a successful long-term business. Um, as far as takeaways from today, I, I, I just hope we're answering all your questions. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know, it, uh, you're getting to know us a little bit. I will be I will be deeply involved in this program as will Asher. UCLA is hiring an, an Asher counterpart to help with uh, some of the market research and technology scouting that we'll be doing long term. And we really want to build a community. Um, and so, uh, you know, that's something that that will will have kind of multiple layers, both the community within the cohort and the greater Starburst community globally, and you know the the LA ecosystem. Um, and we we really want to build all of those things. And so, uh, you know, this is a, a slight preview of that today. Yeah, I think the only other thing I would add there in terms of takeaway, it brings me back to really what Starburst is all about, which is trying to act as that de-risker for a very risky area of what is really not traditionally venture backed. So most VCs, as I'm sure some of you on the call listening in, when they hear a space startup before, you know, we saw all these public market exits recently, it was largely a non-conversation. They, they would just turn you away and, and not really understand the business model um, but also not really want to participate in a lot of the early stage technology development, because that's where obviously most startups fail. Um, and that's very different from, you know, a lot of other sectors that are perhaps more consumer facing. And so what we want to do with scale in particular is fill what we believe to be a, a market gap, which is 
how do you de-risk at an early stage so that venture investors can get involved, commercial markets mm -hmm. can play, uh, and not just have this be, you know, what's traditionally been been a government funded effort early on, and then a few players emerge and, and maybe some later growth stage funding comes in from a larger venture firm. Uh, we want to try and get those smaller firms involved. We, we really want to make, as Liz was said, a, a robust ecosystem. And we, we think that starts with early stage support of, of some of these more tech heavy businesses. Um, and, and so brings a little bit to the next question. I think there's a bit of overlap, which is. I was going to expound on that. Pause for one second. I was going to say is, as part of that too, that is, that is part of the drive for the accelerator and part of the reason that we'll talk a lot about about how to scale the company and what you're what you're looking at for five years down the line, um, because a part of the hesitancy of a lot of venture firms to invest in in hard tech is that the life cycle can be longer for the company, um, and so we really want to help you build a successful company quickly and get to some sort of profitability and potential exit point within five to 10 years, because that's kind of a, that's the, the sweet spot for a lot of venture firms. Um, so we, it is, it is our mission to really truly accelerate some of your growth and help you get product into market as quickly as possible. So. Well said, well said. Um, so yeah, the next question here, a little bit of overlap is and, and I don't think there's a conclusive answer to this one, so I'll, I'll preface it with that, but it's what what would be the top three interest areas for the program, given that aerospace is such a you know diversified field? There's a lot of different technologies that you could claim are aerospace or are directly aerospace. So are there any specific focus areas that either uh, come to mind or the program might focus on, or, or is the answer really just anything? I... I... I think it's really important to work with a com work with companies across verticals, um, both because there it is a large industry and there are a lot of needs, and because, again, if part of the part of the goal of this program is to increase awareness of and excitement for aerospace entrepreneurial efforts. Part of what we want to really showcase is the breadth of technology and applications that fall under this aerospace window. Um, so I, I'm really, I'm looking forward to working with people working on a wide range of technologies and with a wide range of applications, um, which again is also part of the reason for, for the specialization throughout the program. Um, but there also within that too is a lot of opportunity for collaboration um, and for people to, to build and work together within this program, which is really great and uh, kind of unique value add. Yeah, I love that answer. And I think it, in a lot of ways, takes us back to the introduction webinar um, that, that you did a, a couple weeks back now. Um, mm -hmm. It's crazy. It's almost three, two, three weeks from that. But uh, yeah, for those of you that, that are just viewing this recording or, or are here with us today and, and hadn't seen that uh, introduction webinar that, that Elizabeth did and, and a lot of other pretty big name speakers, we, we featured three startup presentations that were um, some exciting companies that, that we'd seen at a similar kind of pre-seed seed stage that we wanted to give a little bit of spotlight and, and showcase for the LA audience, you know, what is happening. And so if you look at the technology focus areas of those three companies, it really um, encapsulates what she's, Elizabeth is, is talking about. So one of them was, uh, you know, a, a battery solution uh, for, for optimizing your, your, uh, your battery systems, honestly, using AI. Um, so that doesn't necessarily automatically mean aerospace. There's a lot of applications for that across industries that I think, uh, you know, aerospace could benefit from. Another one that pitched was a company that is trying to answer the question of everyone is obsessed with launching into space, but nobody is figuring out how to bring things back from space. So that is obviously a, a direct application for a space technology that'll probably be a pretty horizontal company. And then the third one was, uh, you know, a, a hyper, or sorry, supersonic uh, airliner. And so, you know, between aviation space and enabling technologies there, you, you really covered all three. And I think that'll be a replica or, or maybe, a, you know, a, a clue into what, what we're trying to do with scale and, and what the cohort will look like. Yeah. So, yeah, I certainly companies that have uh, that dual or dual plus uh, applications that can work in a, in a number of sectors, uh, I, I think are really interesting. And a lot of the technological developments we've seen 
are, can apply across transportation and in other aspects of infrastructure as well. Um, and we are we're really uh, we're really excited to to explore some of those opportunities. So. Most definitely. Uh, so there's a fun Q and A question here in the chat, which is: is the is the photograph background a licensed image or open source? It's gorgeous. Actually, so Elizabeth is a she's a space based photographer, so she took that herself. Um, not <laughs> only kidding. This is a Adobe stock image, so it is open source. Um, but yeah, feel feel free to use that. <laughs> Uh, well, cool. I don't see any more questions in the chat or Q and A right now, and I think we've covered quite a bit of topics here. Um, if anybody has any more questions while we're still on, would would encourage you to submit those now. Um, if not, you know we're we're both always reachable. Uh, generally speaking, yeah. my email's in the chat. Asterisk Starverside Arrow. Uh, I can either redirect you to Elizabeth if if it's more programmatics or if it's about that. I'll drop my. I'll drop mine in there too. Uh, mine is just my initials ER at Starburst Arrow. So I'll uh, I'll put that in there now for you. Feel free to reach out. Yeah. So I think um, it, it sounds like we're we're pretty wrapped up for today. Unless anybody has any questions in the last couple of seconds that we've got here, uh, we'll put this recording on the website so you can always refer back to it as you're you know filling out an application or just want to learn more about the program and what we're all about. Um, they encourage you to get in touch and, and apply. We're, we're looking forward to hopefully seeing tons of applications come in on, on the second. So, well, hopefully before, but I we, know No, we know you're all putting it off to the very last minute. It's yeah. fun. <laughs> and then I respect that, you know, there's definitely, especially for a lot of the, the, the companies that, you know, will be applying, there's I'm sure a ton going on, whether it's SBIRs proposals that need to be submitted or just general investor convos, whatever it is, I'm, I'm sure there's a ton. So. Um, yeah. We will not. We will not give preferential treatment to applications that come in earlier. So everybody can submit on the second, and, and that'll work just fine. Um, well, so thank you to you guys for joining, and, yeah. and appreciate it. And I think Elizabeth, unless there's anything you want to add, we, we can wrap it up. No, I think that's great. Thanks for thanks for joining me and co-hosting Asher, and uh, thank you all for attending. And we're yeah. excited to chat further. So. Amazing. Well, thanks, guys. I think uh, that's pretty much it. Take care. Thanks, everyone.